Yemen ATV is uh, privileged this morning to speak to Andrew Huntley, the co-founder and managing director of BDA. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Huntley. Um, what uh, I learned from your presentation earlier this morning uh, was just how much activity there is going on uh, in M&A outward from uh, some of those major Asian economies. Uh, how does that look? What, what's, what's the panorama? Well, I think overall uh, the story is one of growth. Um, we've seen the Asians going outbound uh, into developed markets like Europe and North America for some years. Um, but the um, direction is upwards. If I just dial around the region from um, Japan in the north through perhaps China, Korea, and India, um, it does vary. The drivers are different for each of those. So if we go to the Japanese, who've been doing this for many years, um, we've seen a steady, continued outbound activity from, uh, from Japan. Uh, a couple of years ago, we would have thought that that might be driven by the fact that there was a very strong yen, and so there were buying opportunities outside. But in fact, as the yen has softened against the dollar from highs of sort of high 70s to, to now over 100 to the dollar, we haven't seen a let up. So we've seen that continued outbound M&A from Japan, which of course contrasts with the fact that it's very hard to do acquisitions inbound to Japan, primarily for cultural reasons. And this is being driven by their desire for growth? Then. Their desire for growth. I mean, you have companies who are facing pretty much a zero or negative growth within Japan. Uh, they must go out outside the country to seek that growth which they cannot find at home. Um, and I think we'll see that continuing for, for some time. So Japan is, is um, one important story. China, I think, is the other most important story. And Again, a few years ago, primarily we saw large state-owned or state-backed enterprises going outbound, looking for resource opportunities, um, a lot of political strings attached to those. What we see now is a lot of private companies from China joining their state-owned compatriots in, in going out, and they're looking for uh, technology, they're looking for um, products or sometimes management expertise that they can bring back to China. And the Chinese government is beginning to help them more because they're reducing some of the barriers which exist for Chinese companies to make acquisitions outside um, China. Although I think we should always remember that the domestic M&A activity in China uh, is even greater um, than, than what's outbound. So I think China will continue to grow. And I think in five years, we will look back and as we are often by China, we will be surprised by how normal it has become for a Chinese company to have acquired something in, in Europe, perhaps the same way we were with you know, North American, large North American corporates 25, 30, 30 years ago as they, as they uh, invested heavily in, in, um, in Europe. We shouldn't forget India. India made a sort of um, uh, a splash on the international M&A scene pre-crisis. It's been very bruised since then, not just by the crisis, but by their own domestic woes. The new government is probably uh, changing that for the good. And so I think we will gradually and cautiously begin to see Indian groups going outbound again. Um, I worry a bit about the hubris that tends to creep in uh, in international deal making or domestic deal making in India, where valuation expectations tend to run ahead of the curve. Um, but um, I think there have probably been some lessons learned from last time round. And then finally, Korea, I think, is an interesting one. It's a, smaller, it's a smaller economy. It hasn't been so uh, prevalent on the international M&A scene, but um, it is becoming active. And there's probably two drivers. One is this hunt for technology to feed the huge uh, leaders, the big groups in Korea, like the Samsungs, who are competing with Apple globally, with Hyundai Motor, who's competing with Toyota. And their huge base of domestic suppliers that need the technology to keep up with their you know, big customers. And government supported outbound schemes because the government's realized that they're a, you know aging, high cost economy with not very attractive demographics and they don't want to be a small Japan. Uh, they want to diversify, they want to be international and they're, they're pushing Korean companies to go outbound. So there's a lot of different drivers, but it's all, it's all creating more uh, Asia to West activity in M&A. Uh, that must be a rather encouraging prospect for you and your business, uh, doesn't it? Extremely encouraging, yes. Thank you. Uh, very glad you mentioned it. We, we do a lot of work now. I mean, if you look at what we did now versus 10 years ago, 10 years ago it was predominantly working with Western clients who were going to look for growth opportunities in Asia, 
which they perceive to be emerging markets, perhaps with Japan as the exception. Um, and, um, you know, a, a, a very um, strong flow in that direction. Now, I think we see a fairly balanced flow. Um, and for us, it's very exciting because it changes the dynamic of the international deal making that we can get involved in, in our you know, Europe and US with Asia um, footprint. Well, let me wish you every success with that, if I may, Andrew. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much.